Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional, Something Deeper. Today I have a question for you. Why do you think the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart? Seems like the Bible could have picked some better candidates for that title. David had his problems. He committed adultery. <laughs> he had hundreds of wives and yet decided he still needed to commit adultery. He had a problem. Uh, he also committed basically murder to cover up his sin. Um, he wasn't a great father. He had a lot of problems. So what did he have going for him? One thing I think is that David was a good repenter. When Saul was caught in sin, Saul always tried to blame somebody else. He always tried to minimize and he always tried to make excuses. When David was caught in sin, he just said, yeah, I'm guilty. I'm terribly guilty. And God is right to judge me. And he just threw himself on God's mercy. I think that's part of it. But I think there's another part. I want to take you to a story that's not a real famous story in the life of David. It's, it's not the story of Saul chasing him, or it's not the story of David and Goliath. But there's a story when David was king, the Ark of the Covenant, this golden box that was a symbol of God's presence, was stolen during a battle. And they were bringing it back to Jerusalem when the, the Philistines got all sorts of diseases and they're like, get rid of this thing. And so they gave it back to Israel and David is taking it back to Jerusalem. And as they're traveling, 2 Samuel 6, 14 and following tells the story. Wearing a linen ephod, David was dancing before the Lord with all his might, while he and all Israel were bringing up the ark of the Lord with shouts and sounds of trumpets. As the ark of the Lord was entering the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, washed from a window. And when she saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, she despised him in her heart. Okay, that's the, the first part of the story. And I just want you to think about what's happening here. They're bringing the ark, and David, as a symbol of his passion for God, is dancing before the Lord with all his might. Sometimes men don't think of dancing as a manly thing, but David was a manly man, and here he was dancing before the Lord. There's churches, and the Brethren Church has been one of those that decided that dancing was an evil thing. For a long time in our local church, we had the rule that there would be no dancing at weddings. Now, I, I do believe that dancing can be an immoral thing, and there's a lot of that on on uh, TV and music videos and things like that. But dancing can be a beautiful thing and it can even be a worshipful thing. When uh, dancing in a worship service got to be a, a, a deal that people did, I thought that'll be a long time before that happens in the Brethren Church. But here it is. David is dancing before the Lord and his wife, Michael, despises him for it. And she's going to criticize him. If you go down a little bit further, um, when David returned to his home to bless his household, Michael, daughter of Saul, came out to meet him and said, How the king of Israel has distinguished himself today, going around half naked in full view of the slave girls of his servants, as any vulgar fellow would. David said to Michael, It was before the Lord who chose me rather than your father or anyone from his house when he appointed me ruler over the Lord's people of Israel. I will celebrate before the Lord. I will become even more undignified than this, and I will be humiliated in my own eyes. But by these slave girls you spoke of, I will be held in honor. And Michael, daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. It seems that God judged her for her attitude towards David. So it's, it was right for David to dance before the Lord with all his heart. And 
I guess this is a warning for us. Be careful what we what we judge. And if someone worships differently than we do, be careful that we don't judge them as being undignified because of that. A lot of people get upset around people that are passionate for God. Oh, tone it down. Don't get carried away. Passion can be a dangerous thing. It can make people do horrible things. But passion for the right thing, for the true God, the God of love, God of holiness, is never a vice. It's a wonderful thing. And David said, I will be undignified if that's what it takes to show my passion for God. And it just makes me think of the God who Jesus described with his parable of the lost son, who when his son came back from the far distant country, broke and broken, the father ran to him. That's an important point in the story of the prodigal son, because in that culture, a father would never run to his son, especially one that was as shameful as his son. A father was to be dignified. He would never run. And yet here he did. He ran to his son. He was willing to be undignified in his love for his son. And that's the kind of love God, that Jesus is saying God has for you and me, that he will be even undignified in his love for us. And that's how David was like God, a man after his heart. He loved deeply. And it didn't matter what other people thought of it. It didn't matter if they judged him as undignified. He was going to show his love. May we do the same. Father, I thank you for this story and Lord, for the reminder to, to not judge people for their passion for you. But maybe, Lord, to look at our own passion and see if there's anything lacking. May you be our whole center. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you tonight. I, I hope everything's going well for you. I love you, and we will see you tomorrow night, Lord willing.